we interrupt the regularly scheduled mass programming feeds. Watchmen bring this announcement to the earth. A famine of the word of Yahuwah is found on the earth. Plagues are poured out in judgment. Important words of the Creator Yahuwah have been dismissed. Without the word, people are not living abundantly. My people perish for lack of knowledge. There is a city whose builder is Yahuwah Aloha. There is healing for the nations. A light unto the Gentiles, restore all truth. Join us as we share from the word of Yahuwah. Shalom, I just want to say welcome. Here's the completed presentation that I did back in May for the table I affectionately call crickets. Joel 2.25 is something that has given me hope over many years and it reads, I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. And that's from the King James Version. So for decades, I've held on to this promise, but in this study, I realized that there is much more to it. For instance, there are four types of mini beasts mentioned in this verse and this chapter. Looking at the interlinear, and we love BibleHub.com, get in there, click on the interlinear tab, and you'll see the original words, and you'll be able to get to the Strongs to work out what they are. So you can see here with the red line underneath, that's ended up being my access term. Wish empty. That's my access term with the red line there. So I will restore to you the years that these guys have eaten. The swarming locust, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. So there's four types. The colored lines will line up with the table when we get there later on. The other interesting thing in this chapter is that those are the last five Hebrew words and there's an interesting phrase there that pretty much says to me that the Father will send this on us. We're not following his ways. He sends plagues on us. And that's a hard lesson to think about and a hard fact to know and to teach. Anyway, another time. I put this table together and looking at five translations of the scriptures, we have our four locusts, Arbe, Yelek, Hasil, and Gazam. You can see them there in the third column and all the different translations. They're all pretty consistent straight across. I had a couple of questions on what's a palmer worm, what's a canker worm. I went researching and hopefully we can explain those as we go. So Arbe. And as I was saying this to myself, I was practicing before, and I said this word, and I said, Abba, Abba. And I'm like, Abba? Father? What? No, this is Abba. Abe, Abe. And I'm like, wow, they're so similar, very similar. And in my table, they intersected. It was interesting. I'll show you at the end. So Abe is the swarming locust. Strong's at the top there says grasshopper locust from its rapid increase, from the root word rabar, and think rabbit to multiply, excel, and large, abundant. The first occurrence of this word is in the Egypt plagues in Shemoth in Exodus 10 verse 4. In the Klein's dictionary, it notes that the root or reb is to lie in wait, to devastate, to ambush. And Abe also means multitudinous, lots and lots. Cankerworm, yelek. So it's basically the creeping phase or the young locust first seen in a recount of the Mitzrayan plagues in Psalms 105. Lava innumerable. What is this word, cankerworm? So I looked in the Merriam-Webster dictionary and it said it's either of two geometrid moths. So they're not going to turn generally into a grasshopper as we know it. The larva down the bottom there with the blue light are loopers. So we know the word inchworm. And we know that something like that would not be kosher to eat because it's something that creeps along the ground. But it's cute, the inchworm. But they generally turn into hairless caterpillars and they turn into moths more than they do cricket type things. So then we have the stripping locust, which is hasil. So that's the ravager. The stripping locust from hasal, to eat off, to consume. So we've got First Kings chapter 8 there, which is the passage that parallels the book of Yol. And we see Shlomo Solomon dedicating the second temple and talking of repentance and forgiveness and removing plagues. And that's where our table is, which is very interesting. In Kleins, it says the destroyer, the devourer. And Hassel, again, to finish off, consumed, licked, licked up, lapped up, finished, ended, liquidated. It is ended. That is all. Number four is palmer worm, gazam, gimel, zion, mem. And again, palmer worm was a weird word I hadn't heard before. This is generally translated as the gnawing or chewing locusts, and it's from an unused root meaning to devour, first occurring in Joel 1.4, 1, 
also found in 225 where we were, and Amos 4.9. So just those three times in scripture. Locust literally means cutter. Trimming branches, clipped, pruned, cut down, exaggerate, threaten, which means speaking in a cutting manner. So it's interesting there's those two translations there. Looking at the Webster's, because I wasn't sure about this word palmer worm, it says any hairy caterpillar and the larva of one of several moths. So again, we're talking about caterpillars and moths. So we see similar phrasing in Joel chapter 1 verse 4. We're in chapter 2, so now we've gone back to the beginning of Joel. And chapter 1 verse 4 reads, What the gnawing locust left, the swarming locust has eaten. And what the swarming locust left, the crawling locust has eaten. And what the crawling locust left, the consuming locust has eaten. And that's the ISR translation. There's a variation in the order, though, this time, with Gazam being first instead of last. Just immediately, that reminds me of Matthew 19.30, for what it's worth. So I see a four-layer level of destruction sent by Yahuwah to judge the earth again over and over. And yesterday we were talking about the cycles, weren't we? The cycles of life and of judgment and of calling out to the Creator. And then why is it like that? That was a question I had. In the Bible Code software, I do believe that a lot of the words I had and the idea to go searching for Joel 2.25 was from the module work here. So I put the module words in and I got a decent batch of them in Second Chronicles chapter 6, Solomon dedicating the second temple. And the passage there in verse 28 in the light blue is Abe Wachasil. So two of the little guys from our table. This is our context yes. and our surface text. It's quite interesting. When the heavens are shut up, not if, it's past tense. It's like, you're going to do this. And that language is all through this. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you. So plagues, famine, pestilence come because we sin against the Father. And they shall pray towards this place and confess your name and turn from their sin because you afflict them. Then hear in the heavens and forgive the sin of your servants, your people, Israel, for you teach them the tov way in which they should walk and shall send rain on your land, which you have given to your people as an inheritance. When there is scarcity of food in the land, when there is pestilence or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, when their enemies distress them in the land of their cities, any plague or any sickness, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone or by all your people, Yasharel, then each one knows his own plague and his own grief. And that was a whole other idea in itself. Wow, we're to know our own plague and our own grief. And when they spread out their hands to this house, then hear from the heavens your dwelling place and forgive and give to everyone according to all his ways, whose heart you know, for you alone know the hearts of the sons of men. And it was actually my husband that pointed that verse in yellow. So that they fear you to walk in your ways as long as they live in the land which you gave to our fathers. Just the whole idea that the Father sends trials to test us and refine us, or is it just simply to punish us? We know through our study in the last months that he's not just punishing us. Well, not if we seek his ways anyway. Sometimes we're tested, put to trial, and we don't know why. But it's a lot to think about. Another part of the book of Yol that is pertinent to this story and stood out as well, and I'm sure it was part of the module work, is the warning from chapter 1, verse 5. Wake up, you drunkards, and weep, and wail, all you drinkers of wine, on account of the new wine, for it has been cut off from your mouth. So looking at Wake Up You Drunkards in the interlinear Hakitsu Shikorim, just the first two words here is all we're looking at. To arise, be awake, to watch, to clip off, and it's also a thorn. Shikorim is intoxicated, drunken, but thinking of it as a state or a habit. So we're called not to be like that. So there's a warning there. And literally, it means to wake them up, and it's the harvest of the drunkards, which is an interesting thing and would be a great search term again for another time. Here's the report that I found. Lots and lots of things, all there, Second Chronicles chapter 6, as you can see on the right, looking at the odds. The odds were fantastic. 28 terms, 44 characters between rows, so that's our ELS, is 44. Here's the full code matrix, and notice that the middle line there that has the access term in it in red has had more terms added, more things found. And as the access term reads up the page, the context of these terms, we think, could read, admit or take into desolation, and I will recompense, repay, restore, pluck off. It's talking about a harvest. 
I can see that. So next we look into pertinent scripture links to the Ramsell method, which is the plain text is confirming the terms found, plus comparing the terms Shema, listen and obey, and Shema, ruin and consternation. There's just one letter difference. There's an iron on the end or a hay on the end. And it becomes apparent that we have a choice to make. So there's a harvest coming and we have a choice to make. Now, this was also part of the module that I was working on as well, comparison, and it was just a beautiful study. So looking at the center, the black lines there, we've got Shema with the iron on the end running at a diagonal, and we've got Shema, ruin and consternation running up the page. It's actually the pink letters. I found a hay prefix for Shema with an iron. It's the Shema, the Shema, the Shema prayer from Deuteronomy chapter 6. I ended up making a second presentation, just taking everything over to that scripture as well. And that's beautiful too. And we'll present that another time. But looking at both these terms, we're looking at Second Chronicles chapter 6, and we've got verse 24 and 25, 26 running through them. The circles there, we've got the iron here. The two mems are actually sharing verse 26, I think it was. And there's lots of beautiful talk in here about confessing the Father's name and turning from your sin, and we will be called his people. It's just beautiful. Plus, we found a Lamed prefix on the term Shema. So it's to or unto ruin or consternation that we found here because we've got a Lamed here. Lamed, Shin, Mem, Hay. And this side, we've got a Hay, Shin, Mem, Iron. It's interesting that they almost intersected. If you're enjoying this video, click like, subscribe, click the bell, and please share this video. Shalom. Let's get back to the video. Moving on, we had the scripture where this was found was the dedication of the temple. I found this awesome word, hamon, which is tumult, crowd, or wealth, and it's here, hamon. You can imagine the crowd at the dedication of this temple. Everyone would have been there. It was just like a living throng of people. And we also had the word playatar here, which meant deliverance and escape. And they shared the pay, the lamed, and the hay all in the line here for Second Chronicles 6.21. Also my name in the older spelling with the wire and it was across there as well, which I thought was interesting. That read, You shall give heed to the supplications of your servant and your people Israel when they pray towards this place and hear from your dwelling place in the heavens and shall hear and forgive. So that was the prayer. Well, we can talk about temples all day, can't we? But we are the temple now. We are the temple. So an escape and a deliverance. But the throng of the crowd would have been something just amazing to see. The next one that I found was quite interesting. And we've got Yahushua. Yahushua running from the bottom corner, Yod and up, and cross intersecting with Yisrael. Almost sharing a letter, almost. <laughs> that is verse 27. Then hear in the heavens and forgive the sin of your servants, your people, Israel, for you teach them the tov way in which they should walk and shall send rain on your land, which you have given to your people as an inheritance. I just thought that was just beautiful. Talking about the people, then we've got Yasharel and we've got the Messiah crossing there. And we're talking about a massive redemption there and an inheritance. This is the completed table that I did back in May. I love this word over here in the magenta, manure. <laughs> it's just like, what? What? And it's here, manure. And talking about the people at the temple, and it's a move to tremble, to wave. It's just like that throng of people that were there waving and trembling at the dedication of the temple. Very interesting, which was the same here for Nina, to shake. A shaking throng, Nina is here running through in the brown, coming down here. And the root word neen with offspring. So everyone's there, the offspring are there, and they're all dedicating the temple. We had Sarid, survivor, which reminds us of Sarah at a vertical here. We also had fasting, Sumu, fasting, which is running across the middle here. There wouldn't have been much space to be getting any food in this great big throng. They would have been fasting, I would imagine, for most of the time there. Pahath. To bear fruit and to increase, it's all about a harvest, this whole thing. A Yakuts and Shakur, which is wake up the drunkards. Yakuts is here. Yakuts. Shakawa was there, the intoxicated one. 
I had Kiyun there. That was as part of the module work. It means the planet Saturn, but it also means directly, like something my grandmother in South Australia used to say. I'll do that directly. It's like soon. <laughs> the Yahuwah Palindrome is here, sharing the hay with Abe, and it had a Mem prefix on it as well, which was very interesting. From the locust. From the locust. Yahuwah sends the locusts. He sent them, we knew, to Egypt. Apa is across the top up here, which is obscurity and darkness. So you're going to get drunk and you're going to get lost in all that sort of thing. You're not going to know what's going on. Summer fruit, Quitsuk, reminds me of the movie June, Quitsuk Hederak. He was like the messiah, the complex guy, Quitsuk. Your harvest, your summer fruit. And that was this one coming down here in the light blue, Quitsuk. Coming all the way through our talk about harvest here. Seven months' work, it's a stack to take in. So the overwhelming theme, all linked here, was harvest, and we reap what we sow. I was trying to look for a scripture, we reap what we sow, and I ended up finding an awesome link there with a stack of scriptures, and I'll show it to you in a moment when we finish. Just looking at some background research here, these are some more scriptures reading on locusts and what they are, but we're only talking about four in the book of Joel. And in the last few days, I've had to look at Leviticus 11, the food laws and bugs in verses 20 to 23. And Abe is there, the first one. They are kosher to eat. Then there's Kolam, the bald locust. Kharkol, pretty much a cricket. Hagar, which is another grasshopper. It's all about jointed legs, from what I can see. There was a mention in there somewhere of beetle. I'm not sure about that, though. They're not the ones found in this study, but they are there in the food laws. A final note there that it may be worth noting that it is okay to eat some bugs, according to Torah. I put you reap what you sow into Google, and I've got all these scriptures. KJV is the best for our purposes here. Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived. Yahweh is not mocked for whatsoever a man sows, that he shall also reap. Like you're talking about the harvest. Massive harvest and a massive decision. Shema and Shema. Do you want to hear and obey the Father or do you want ruin and consternation? It's a no-brainer for me. They sound the same in Hebrew, but the letter has a different meaning, which is why they sound the same to our ears. But in actuality, it's two different words and they have two different meanings. There's a lot of subtlety in Hebrew. Yahuwah is very strategic I think he's very strategic with an enemy that is an enemy to us, our souls. There's a harvest coming. There's a harvest coming. Maybe I'll just sort of capture these on screen and if people want to read them, they can read them. He says when we seek him with all our heart, we will find him. Hallelujah. The Shema, and speaking that, that is the Tob one. That is the one desired. Shema, to hear, to obey. Be a doer of the word, not just a hearer only. That's right. That's what our Messiah said. Yeah. It's just such a beautiful picture to listen, listen intently to obey for the purpose of obeying the Father. It's a heart desire. How could I please him? You could think about a loved one wanting to give a special gift to someone they love and that they don't know what to get them. And so they listen for clues. They listen intently. How can I please her or how can I please him? I think it's a beautiful thought. And that is the concept of Shema. We hear with the intent to obey. We listen with a mission. It's our heart's desire to serve his desires, bring forth his desires. That is beautiful. That's a whole different mindset than we don't have to obey the law. That was nailed to the cross. Ew. That kind of concept. It's the complete opposite. This is a covenant term. 1160 times it's there in the scriptures. Wow. Right. What have we got on the strongs here? The overwhelming thing is it's about obedience, to hear intelligently, often with implication of attention, obedience, just the concept of giving Yahuwah attention instead of the concept of, well, he died and left his son in charge, so he's no longer valid. That's not scriptural. This word, 
we're to do these things. We're to publish. We're to publish videos and things to teach, to tell. We're called to tell you. And be a witness. And there is a saying that says, they must labour before you harvest. You sow in tears before you reap. Reap in joy. Reap in, I don't want to use the word joy. Oh, okay. <laughs> reap in gladness. Is gladness yeah. a clean word? <laughs> Oh, all these words that were used for women's names. How many women were named after all these Greek goddesses thinking that they were biblical? I can go and have a look at the live table. I've got the live table here. All this stuff here. It's going to be dim or dark. Obscurity. Dark as in obscure. And that was intoxicated as a habit running across there. Survivor. There was just so much in this. Ayawayalek, one of the bugs, shared the coof with Cabal. So way like the young locust caterpillar canker worm devourer sharing the yod with cabal was acquire, receive. And here's the scripture that the hay that's shared with Alba. They're sharing here, they're both sharing. Second Chronicles six eighteen. But will Elohim in very truth dwell with men on the earth, the whole heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this house which I have builded? And that's Shlomo, Solomon talking about dedicating the temple and the bugs, the plagues that Yahuwah sends, there they are. There was just so much, so much to this, but what sort of stack on the main access tomb was just becoming more and more amazing. So we had picture of harvest, fasting, a choice between ruin and destruction, uh, just so much. Sherry's put rural or feral cat's diet will be 70% crickets or grasshoppers in the height of summer. Yeah, my cat, the ginger cat it was, he would sit and he would jump on them in the back grass and he would eat so, so many of them. I read about that post about the locust tree and not the locust. Yeah, know. that's interesting. Very interesting. because Wild locusts like- and honey could be just a vegetarian diet. Yes, it is. Ellen White, I know that she spoke about it. A few people do because they say that the word locust in Greek is akris. I've always called it akris. A-K-R-I-S, akris. It's only used three other times in the Brit Shah, and it always describes a locust, but it doesn't say which locust, whether it's a locust tree or whether it's... So in conclusion, perhaps we must wait patiently waiting on redemption and restoration whilst doing our best to learn as much as we can about our loving creator and warning us all to wake up you drunkards. But all I hear is crickets. Shalom and thanks for watching. All praise to Yahuwah our creator and his son and our Messiah, Yahushua. May this video enrich your love in and understanding of our Abba Yahuwah and his word. Much has been hidden. Together let's seek the restoration of all truth. A Light Unto the Gentiles channel invites you to join the Hebrew Restoration and Code Searching team. Please email us at alightintothegentiles at gmail.com to let us know of your interest. Looking for fellowship? We invite you to join our Facebook group, Code Searching Hebrews. Love, truth, and revelation are vital in these last days. The Hebrew Restoration and Code Searching Ministries through A Light Unto the Gentiles serves Yahuwah and the sheep from our Father's pasture. Please prayerfully consider a monthly donation to Restoration Farms Incorporated. Links are provided for you below in the description.